to welcome everybody officially to this panel on disharmony, war, decolonization, and national identity in the 1960s. Uh, my name is Rachel Gillette. I'm currently teaching at Harvard University in the History and Literature concentration. Uh, and uh, it is a rich and interesting panel. At the center of it is the intersection between music and history. Uh, so I'm sure we'll have uh, many rich conversations about that at the end. But right now, I'd like to get us started with our first paper. Uh, and we have Bronson Long joining us uh, from uh, Georgia Highlands College, where he is an assistant professor of history and has uh, produced a cluster of articles um, engaging in sports history, uh, European history, and most recently uh, he's written on Complicating Europe, Transatlantic Relations, and the Origins of the Saar Dispute, 1944-1949, to 1949, uh, in the Atlantic Affairs Journal. Uh, and then Saarlanders into Germans, the role of football in the formation of national identity in post-war Europe, which sounds fascinating, uh, in the Football Studies Journal. Uh, Bronson is going to talk to us today about Le Diable, War and Belgian National Identity in the Music of Jacques Brel. Uh, and we warmly welcome him to do that. I don't think I've... Oh, I forgot your impressive uh, array of fellowships. Uh, most recently, a Fulbright uh, foreign language teaching assistantship, but also uh, you went to Germany uh, on an American Council on Germany scholarship. And uh, you are a holder of the Bourg Chateaubriand uh, for your PhD research. Um, so with no further ado, I welcome you to talk to us about Le Diable. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move to the podium. Good morning, and thank you for, for coming out on an early morning and when, when it's cold. Belgian singer Jacques Brel, who was born in 1929 and died in 1978, was one of the most important and influential Francophone musicians of the 20th century. Together with Georges Brasson and Leo Ferry, Brel, wrote, who, Brel, who wrote 150 songs and sold over 25 million albums, is considered a key figure in modern French chanson. Although he died over 30 years ago, Brel continues to sell over a quarter million albums a year, more than Edith Piaf, who is a, well, who is a w more well-known francophone singer in the English in English-speaking nations. Brel influenced singers as diverse as David Bowie, Sting, Ray Charles, J uh, Judy Collins, and Frank Sinatra with several of these singers having performed his music either in French or in an English translation. Brel wrote, recorded most of his albums and performed all of his concerts in the 1950s and 60s. Brel's music career spanned the Tronc Glorious, the 30 years of economic expansion after the Second World War. While Brel was especially known for his love songs such as Quand on a que, que l'amour et ne me quitte pas and uh, La Chanson de, de Vieux, Vieux Amant, his, uh, he, he's also known for a number of songs that are ironic, mocking, dark, or self-depreciating. -depreci Much of his music, however, also deals with war, political violence, and Belgium national identity. This paper focuses on these latter themes in Brel's music. It argues that these songs were part of his overall attack on bourgeois society. It also suggests that Brel should not be simply seen as a popular musician, but also as an important critic in his own right, especially on the issues of war, political violence, and Belgium national identity. Indeed, many of Braille's songs in the late 1950s and early 1960s closely, and often quite perceptively, followed the tumultuous political and cultural changes that engulfed France and Belgium in the late 1950s and 60s. In a few cases, Braille's music even anticipated further discord, including the counterculture of the late 1960s and early 1970s. Despite his popularity and even the continuing relevance of his music, this paper concludes that Braille has often been an underappreciated critic. Jacques Braille had a complicated and contradictory relation relationship with his homeland of Belgium. In public, Braille praised Belgium, stating that his father was Flemish and claiming his Flemish heritage uh, very clearly. Braille, Braille distinguished between what he saw as le flamant ordinary, hard-working Flemish people who were good, although a bit simple-minded in his view, and irrational at times, and between those and the nationalist far-right Flemish, or Le Flamignon. However, 
despite those distinguishing uh, uh, marks in, in, in his, uh, his public comments, Brunt tended to brand all Flemish nationalists as extremists and failed to recognize the historical discrimination that Flemish speakers had experienced in Belgium. Also in private, although, although he, he seemed very, uh, very much to embrace Belgium in public, in private he sometimes complained that Belgium was, quote, an artificial country and that Belgians were all cons. Moreover, while Brel frequently lashed out in his music against what he saw as stifling conformism and Hi Hippocratic bourgeois society in Belgium, he had his daughters raised in Brussels in a very bourgeois atmosphere. Finally, although Brel often spoke about Belgium and on occasion wrote songs about it, he was frequently absent from Belgium and, sp and spent most of his time in the 1950s and 60s and even beyond uh, in Paris, only visiting Bre uh, Bre uh, Brussels occasionally to see his family. Nonetheless, despite all this, his music largely ignored questions of French identity and focused largely on Belgium identity, or, or Belgitude, as he called it. As Brel's career took off in the 1950s and 60s, Belgium was undergoing great changes. Despite losing its colonies after the war, uh, most particularly the Congo, International organizations such as NATO and a number of European institutions were, were, were locating in Brussels. Within Belgium itself, however, the long history of cultural and linguistic tensions between the Flemish and, Wall and Walloons, the collaboration of some within the Fl Flemish national mo nationalist movement with the Germans during the war, and King Leopold III's lack of respect for the Constitution during the war itself cast a very dark shadow over post-war Belgian politics. Moreover, while Flanders prospered after the war, Wallonia experienced both demographic and economic decline. In addition, by the mid-1960s, the city of Brussels had changed to the point that it was, as Lode Wills puts it, quote, an overwhelming, even militant Francophone city, where Dutch speakers, for cultural and social reasons, were under constant pressure to conform. On the other hand, the Flemish movement rebounded after 1955 and increasingly demanded an end to long-standing discrimination against Dutch speakers in government, corporate, and academic positions. By the 60s, Belgium saw tremendous political friction over language issues. Indeed, civic life and political parties began to fracture along linguistic lines in the 1960s, culminating in the 1993 constitutional forms that made Belgium a federal state, granting its linguistic regions more uh, internal power. Now, Brel sang about his homeland of Belgium in several of his songs. One of his most famous and most moving songs is his 1962 hit, Le Plat Pays. In Le Plat Pays, he describes the haunting beauty of the flat Belgium landscape with the North Sea, the dunes, the rocks of its beaches, the cracking wild north wind, the low gray sky, and the seemingly infinite fog. Brel cl clearly claimed Belgium as his own in Le Plat Pays. Indeed, the, the song's vivid depictions of, of Belgium's natural beauty could only have come from someone who knew the country as intimately as, as Braille did. Furthermore, the song's refrain of Le Plat Pays, le, le plat pays qui est le mien clearly identified the author with Belgium. Despite the fact that Braille spoke Flemish poorly, he did reco record a version of Le Plat Pays along with several of, a few other, of his other songs in Flemish. And another tribute to the language of his Flemish ancestors and to the complex cultural hybridity of Belgium, Brel's song, Mary Kit, is a love story of a Walloon man and a Flemish woman that alternates between the lyrics in French and Dutch. The song ends with the couple breaking up, which Chris Tinker argues, quote, may indeed be interpreted as a mournful allegory of Belgium's social divisions. Although Brel's music did on occasion make reference to the Flemish, he was fundamentally a Francophone, both musically and, and personally, and was never really comfortable in Flemish. He was not interested in, in constitutional or legal reforms, but was very fascinated with cultural and linguistic issues in Belgium. As his tours often took him to Quebec, he also remarked the similarities of cultural and linguistic tensions between the French and English speakers in Canada, tensions that were also on the rise, interestingly enough, in this period. Ironically, Bell's time in Quebec, Braille's time in Quebec did might not make him more sympathetic to the Flemish, who he often criticized. Some scholars, such as Olivier Todd and, and Paul Alblaster, have concluded that it is likely that while Bell was, Braille was struck by prote Flemish protest movements in Belgium in 1962 and 1963, 
as, as was the case with many French speakers in, Bel uh, in Belgium, Braille was simply incapable of understanding the real grievances that the Flemish had over their long history of discrimination in Belgium. Braille's criticism of the Flemish showed up in, in his music, in particular two of his songs that I, that I want to briefly highlight. His 1959 song, Le Flamand, describes a group of, group of Flemish people dancing first as youth who were searching for marriage partners, then as marriage people with children, married people with children, and finally as elderly grandparents. The song pokes fun of the Flemish as unhappy, uptight, parochial traditionalists who mindly copy the lifestyle of their parents. While Le Flamand could be interpreted as misogynistic for its description of Flemish women, in the Flemish community, the song was seen as insulting to all Flemish people, and it made Braille a persona non gratia in, in Flanders. Braille's most critical song of the Flemish was a song uh, towards the end of his life entitled Les If, which he recorded on, on his last album, the 1977 album Le Marquis. The title uh, of Les If suggests that the word Braille uses in this song, uh, namely Le Flamagnon, to describe the Flemish, is an obscenity. Uh, this song is a blistering polemic against Flemish nationalists. Br Braille attacks the Flemish for their politics, accusing them, as he put it, uh, quote, Nazi durant la guerre et catholique entre, entre elles, vous, vous osculez sans cesse du fusil au missile. Clearly making a word play uh, here. Uh, by the time Braille recorded his last album, he was dying of lung cancer and arguably had little to lose by attacking a Flemish nationalist in such a harsh manner. Uh, nonetheless, Les F shows a side of Braille that detested Belgium or what had at least become of Belgium by, by the 1970s, particularly with Flemish nationalism. A number of Braille songs also deal with the military and political violence. Braille first began to address these topics in his song, Sava le Diable, which was released as part of his March 1954 album, Grand Jacques. This song, whose fictional narrator, the devil, while delivering a speech at a banquet in hell, describes things he saw on his last visit in Earth or his last visit to Earth. What he observed on this brief tour pleased him and convinced him that all was going well from his perspective. Uh, the song depicts men playing with the dangerous game of war, uh, uh, people putting bombs on railroad tracks to kill others, and from the devil's perspective, everything is great. Braille's sophisticated account of war and terrorism in Sava le Diable uncannily anticipated the nature of the Algerian conflict that began with the FLN's first attacks against French targets in Algeria some seven months after, the French, uh, after this song's release. Another song that addresses violence was La Bastille, which appeared on the same album as Saval le Diable. While Saval le Diable explicitly deals with terrorism, La Bastille offers a more general reflection on the use of violence to advance political goals. La Bastille sees violence as tainting even noble causes, and Braille is skeptical even of its usefulness in overthrowing tyranny, as with the French Revolutionary's destruction of, of the Ancien Régime. Indeed, the refrain of this song is, Aucun, aucun rêve jamais ne mérite une guerre. So there's no, no, never any reason for war in, in his view in this. In addition to Sava le Diable and La Bastille, Braille's 1959 song, La Colombe was an, was an anti-war song clearly directed at the Algerian war. Braille had performed concerts in Algeria while on tour in 1954 and in the, in the early 1960s. Although he believed early on, as early as 1954, that France could not hold on to Algeria and that ultimately the French should grant Algeria independence, he avoided commenting on the war in public. Nonetheless, La Colombe cast doubts on all aspects of war from soldiers departing from the train station to the fanfare of the crowd to the erection of war monuments after the conflict is over. Despite the fact that the song did not mention Algeria by name, the timing of its release in 1959, the same year, that, that, uh, the, the year after that France experienced a crisis over, over Algeria, culminating in Charles de Gaulle's return to power, clearly associated the song with Algeria. Braille's music not only dealt with political violence and war, but the nature of the military as an institution which Braille viewed in entirely negative terms. For instance, his gripping song, Au Suivant, which I'll, I'll show here in a bit, describes the experience of a youthful soldier losing his virginity in the factory-like conditions of an army brothel. Although the soldier contra uh, contracted gonorrhea in the, in the brothel, that isn't the, the least of his problems in this song. 
Indeed, the soldier's sexual encounter with a prostitute was a dehumanizing one, without any threat of tenderness or love. As such, it traumatized him sexually for the rest of his life. The song recounts how the lieutenant's voice shouting next to the naked men in the line at the brothel especially haunted the soldier. Brel's 1962 album, Le Bourgeois, featured also two songs that also depicted the military in negative light, Zangra and Bruxelles, both of which describe a military career as boring, pointless, mindless, and ultimately a waste of one's life. In many ways, Brel simply saw the military as another stifling bourgeois institution. The last song that Brel wrote about was uh, May, uh, May 1900 Count, which, feature, which, which was featured on his last album in 1977. In this song, he revisits his childhood from the vantage point of an 11-year-old witnessing the German invasion of Belgium in May 1940. While many of Braille's songs focused on the violence of war and the absurdity of, 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 of military life, this song deals with the trauma of defeat in war and re recounts how his, uh, as a boy, his, uh, his, his Belgium national pride was, was quote, crushed by quelques allemands disciplinés qui écrasaient ma belgétude. In the end, for, for Braille, uh, political violence and the military were themes that frequently appeared and were always entirely in negative terms. Uh, in conclusion here, and to leave a brief amount of time to, to show one of his songs here, uh, much of his uh, uh, music oscillated between uh, idealism and pessimism about human life and uh, human nature and life in general. Uh, his, songs, his songs about uh, uh, Belgium were mixed, uh, tending towards the negative, and in contrast, his songs about war and political violence were universally critical. All, all of Braille's songs were part of his bro broader attack on bourgeois society, an attack that to some degree found a greater echo in the late 1960s and early 1970s counterculture. Throughout his career, he performed, Braille performed a number of songs that offered a powerful and poignant commentary on war, political violence, and tensions between the Flemish and Wall Wallons. Although he was a very popular singer, again with many of his love songs, Braille's music offers a window in some of the most daunting issues that France and Belgium grasp, grapple with in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, Braille should thus be, be seen as a critic in his own right and should be appreciated as such. <coughs> Thank you. Now, I, I think I might have two or three minutes, which is, is just perfect for me to show uh, one of his songs. And the song I, I talked about uh, of the young man losing his virginity in the, the army brothel that is au suivant, I want to show this briefly, and it does have some English subtitles. And one, one thing I didn't mention, I'll say this very briefly, Brel was known for the physicality of his performances, just the energy he put into them. And I, I hope this, this uh, stands out in this brief film clip. Okay. Well, let's see if the technology works for us. Okay, it's just, hang on, it's going to... Just thinking about it. It decided it was asleep, which it wasn't. Oh, okay. Well, it is 8.30. Here we go. Okay.
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, that's what we want. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully not that bad. It'll never mean the same thing to me. And uh, thank you. And right on time, actually.